The hysteria related to Donald Trump is off the charts, and I think it exposes the raw politics behind it. Um, I have a couple of points I'd like to make. The only president who I am aware of who actually assassinated American citizens was President Obama. So perhaps the ranking member should revisit her history books. I have an article I, here from major, the ACLU stating the ACLU and CCR have filed a lawsuit challenging the government's targeted killing of three U.S. citizens in drone strikes far from any con armed conflict zone. In Alaki versus Panetta, the group charges that the U.S. government's killings of U.S. citizens in Yemen last year violated the Constitution's fundamental guarantee against the deprivation of life without due process of law. The killings under Obama were part of a broader program of targeted killing by the United States outside of the context of armed conflict and based on vague legal standards, a closed executive process and evidence never presented to the courts. And as for kids in cages, again, that was President Obama. Several former Obama administration officials took to social media and news outlets last month to explain a gallery of years-old photos that showed immigrant children sleeping in shoddy conditions at a government-run holding facility in Arizona. The images which the Associated Press first published in 2014 during the Obama administration resurfaced recently for reasons that remain unclear and quickly prompted viral outrage on Twitter. One particularly disturbing image showed two children sleeping on mattresses on the floor inside what appeared to be a cage. A number of prominent liberals and even a former Obama administration official shared the photos, mistakenly believing that they depicted the Trump administration's treatment of immigrant children who were forcibly separated from their parents. John Favreau, who worked as a speechwriter for former President Barack Obama, tweeted, this is happening right now, and the only debate that matters is how we force our government to get these kids back to their families as fast as humanly possible. Favreau said he later deleted the tweet after social media users pointed out that the photos were taken during the Obama administration. So, I think it's important to correct the record as to actually who assassinated American citizens being President Obama and it being President Obama who kept kids in cages. Now, as this committee uncovers uh, more and more censorship activities by the federal government, one thing we are wrestling with is accountability for these bad actors violating the First Amendment. They are already not elected by the citizens, so don't have to answer to the electorate. And certain accountability statutes, such as 42 U.S.C. Section 1983, only apply to state employees, which is why Mr. Bishop and I have introduced the Censorship Accountability Act to actually hold federal employees personally liable for violating the First Amendment of American citizens. But even in those circumstances when, where one can go to courts for relief, that requires a great deal of time and resources to, provide, to prove liability, harm, and then obtain relief. Uh, it is apparent from the ongoing Missouri versus Biden case that all of these bad actors, it makes it difficult to eventually hold them accountable. Ms. Richardson, I highlight these things to show that accountability can be hard to achieve for injured Americans. Do you think this could be further exacerbated if certain activities that facilitate censorship are increasingly done by AI systems rather than government employees? I do. I think that what these tools open the potential for is broader censorship and done without having to have an individual employee sitting there doing it, they're able to flag posts um, at, a, at a larger scale. So I do think the fact that the NSF is funding them is concerning. Well, in the upscaling of AI technology can provide censorship operations, and the scope of it is absolutely astonishing. For example, in its pitch to the NSF, Meaden stated, stated that it was using AI to monitor 750,000 
50,000 blogs and media articles daily, as well as to mine data from the major social media platforms. That just gives you an idea of the absolute scope of what AI could do for violating people's First Amendment rights. In your testimony, Ms. Richardson, you outlined in great detail the number of grants, the large sums, and the various number of partners that the federal do dollars are going to to censor American citizens in violation of the First Amendment. What can the proliferation of this type of technology do to the censorship industrial complex, which has already been uncovered, if it is not properly overseen for beneficial development? Well, I think what we've seen through, as you just brought up, the Missouri v. Biden case and Twitter files and many other aspects is this increasing involvement of the federal government with private parties in order to censor speech. And this is just another example of that, federal government funding universities, funding companies to develop these tools that allow censorship at a broader scale. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman Lady yields back. Um, we, for our witnesses, we have... Ten more minutes. Uh, I know you've been sitting there for a while, but if you can hang with us ten more, that'd be. I know we'll have a few maybe closing comments from the ranking member, myself, and then we'll, we'll uh, conclude our hearing. I want to recognize our newest member, our two newest members. Uh, first, the gentleman from Ohio is recognized for five minutes. Uh, I thank the chairman. Thank our witnesses. It is an honor to be on the Weaponization Committee. It's disappointing that Congress needed to create this committee, but it definitely needed to be done. Uh, the American people rightly recognize that our own government is being turned against its citizens. The Bill of Rights was put in place by the Founding Fathers fundamentally because in the first days of the Constitution, the concern was that the federal government would somehow be used and turned against not just the states, but the citizens of those states. And today we're seeing the Bill of Rights being trampled in every kind of way. We see freedom of religion. Oh, you can have it, just don't exercise it. Freedom of speech, the right to assemble, uh, all of the First Amendment trampled. The Second Amendment, people want to trample it. I would say the Third has been trampled as well. You have to provide provision for government on everything, from a cell phone to a laptop to your car. Now, maybe even digital ID. All kinds of things. People are supporting every kind of infringement, warrantless spying on American citizens, government agencies buying data that they would otherwise have to get a warrant or a subpoena, and on down the list through the entire Bill of Rights. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? And I think this committee is a good response to it. Um, today, we're focusing on AI. And um, you know, I just, when you think about AI, how do you assess, you know, whether the uh, algorithm has got it right? Is it a question of which speech gets canceled? Because that seems to be the case. And the reality is, while some of this activity went on under the previous administration, in the early days of the Biden administration, they wanted to formalize it. They didn't call it a ministry of truth. They came up with the disinformation governance board. But Mr. Lukianoff, what's the state of play in recognizing when free speech is, frankly, be, have, have, people are having their free speech rights canceled? Um, I would turn us to the less sexy and less sci-fi scenario of what's going on on American college campuses. Um, I feel like I'm on the free speech left. I feel like I've been screaming at the sky trying to get people to take seriously the threats to free speech on campus for a long time now. 2020 and 2021 were the highest number of professors fired, and they were on the left and the right, to be clear, um, that I'm aware of since probably the night, uh, for two year, a two year period since probably the 1930s. Um, and this is something that is not getting sufficient uh, attention. Now, who programs AI? Overwhelmingly elite uh, college graduates who actually, when you poll them, have some pretty distressing ideas about freedom of speech. Uh, think about the idea of us all living on the most repressive college campus, um, and that's why we should be afraid of what AI potentially could become if we don't actually take this issue a little more seriously. Yeah, uh, so thank you about that, for that. And when you think about, uh, you know, AI and the language models that are used, mm -hmm. how do you know what the primary sources are? You know, when you're looking at the uh, way that speech is canceled on campus, there are, you know, some people are disfavored. Maybe some campuses won't allow Congressman Jordan on their campus, or maybe some won't allow our ranking member on campus. And uh, they might view it as good because the other person got canceled. Uh, we can all recognize that as some limitation of, of speech. But when you look at the algorithm, 
you just know what got, you don't really get to see what was filtered. So, uh, Mr. Fang, Ms. Richardson, do you have thoughts about the, uh, you know, how we, how we detect this kind of activity in AI? Well, look, it's not, not my role as a journalist to prescribe any particular solution, but I would want to point at the example in the UK where they have a little bit stronger data laws. A lot of the people who were censored during the pandemic for simply criticizing the efficacy of some of the vaccines, discussing some of these pandemic lockdowns, the way that they were able to find out that they were surveilled and then censored is that they were able to make requests with some of the UK's data laws for the government and these private sector firms to provide their own data to them. And that's how they found out. We don't have those same strong protections in the US. Perhaps it's worth looking at uh, stronger rights to your own data, better algorithm algorithmic transparency. Um, this is worth debating. Thank you for that. And I'll yield the balance of my time to the chairman.